What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi 5 and more specifically using the all new Raspberry Pi 5 as an everyday desktop PC. Is the new Pi 5 a desktop replacement? Well, straight off the bat, in my opinion, you know, if you're looking for a gaming machine and if you do work on your PC that requires serious CPU and GPU horsepower, then no, this isn't going to replace your workstation. But I'll tell you, with some tweaking and tuning, the new Raspberry Pi 5 could work out for a lot of people as an everyday desktop PC. For web browsing, video playback, document editing, you can get some photo editing done on this little machine. The new Pi 5 does have a plethora of new features built in, and one of my favorites is actually the storage speed. We'll talk about that more in a second, but we've also got a brand new CPU here. Now, base clock is 2.4 GHz on a quad-core A76 CPU, but we can overclock up to 3 GHz, and like I mentioned, with some tweaking and tuning, I do think that this would work out as a pretty nice little desktop for a lot of people out there. If you're familiar with the Raspberry Pi and Linux in general, then you might notice that I'm not using Raspberry Pi OS. This is Ubuntu. It's actually Ubuntu 23.10 and it now supports the Raspberry Pi 5. You can download this through the Raspberry Pi Imager or from Conical's official website. And in my opinion, right now, this is the operating system to use if you want to use it as an everyday desktop PC. Personally, I love the look and feel of Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop, and with this new CPU, a little bit of an overclock and faster storage, this is a really, really snappy operating system. Okay, so before we jump into it, I do want to talk about how I have my Raspberry Pi 5 set up. I've got the official cooler, and I've also got a 3 GHz overclock on the CPU, and I've also overclocked the GPU to 1000 MHz. With sufficient cooling, it's not going to thermal throttle. This official Raspberry Pi cooler does a really great job, even with that higher overclock, and it does unlock quite a bit of performance on the Pi 5. Next thing I recommend to up performance on the Pi 5 is not using a micro SD card. With the new I.O. system that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has put in place on the Raspberry Pi 5, USB storage over the USB 3 port has significantly been increased along with the I.O. from the SD card slot, but it's nowhere near what we can do over USB. Here's a quick benchmark I ran on both. Left hand side, we've got that SanDisk Extreme. We capped out at 91.3 megabytes per second. And on the right hand side, we've got that Samsung Fit USB drive, 304.1 megabytes per second. I personally do notice faster boot times, everything just loads up a lot quicker using USB, and there's no extra setup required. Basically, you're just going to flash your operating system to a USB drive instead of a micro SD card, plug it in, boot it up, Raspberry Pi is going to be up and running. So really, that's all I've done here. Overclock the CPU, overclock the GPU, and I'm using USB storage. Now, I'm going to plug this into my game capture and show you what this thing can do. Okay, so here we are with Ubuntu on the Raspberry Pi 5. Like I mentioned, I did overclock the GPU and CPU. We've also got this running from a USB drive, a pretty fast USB drive. As you can see, we've got that Pi 5, Ubuntu 23.10. Up to 3 gigahertz here on all four cores. I've also got that GPU at 1000 megahertz, and this is the 8 gig model of the Raspberry Pi 5. I would highly suggest getting the 8 gig model if you want to use it as a desktop. Now, 4 gigs would get you by, but having that extra definitely helps out when having a bunch of apps open. Web browsing is pretty snappy here. I've installed Chromium. Now, you could always use Firefox if you want to, but just uh, heading over to the Raspberry Pi website, you can see everything's going to load up really quickly here. And uh, Ethernet would also help out, but I am on my Wi-Fi 6 network. Not too bad. Go over here to software. And in order to download this, you can actually get it from Conical's official website. Or you can use the Raspberry Pi imager. Just go to uh, other images and you'll see it there ready for the Raspberry Pi 5. You can flash it to an SD card or an external SSD USB drive. With this super fast I.O. in the Raspberry Pi 5, it makes a huge difference. Even going from a really fast, expensive SD card over to something like this little Samsung USB drive that I have here. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Video playback has definitely improved on the Raspberry Pi 5. 1080, 60 FPS video here is still a bit laggy. I mean, we do drop a lot of frames. You can do 720p 60 or you could install something like h 264 which is going to block out that uh, 60 FPS. It's also going to block 1080p. 
Now, uh, with it off, we can actually go up to 4K, but it's definitely going to struggle with 4K 60 playback. At 30 FPS, even 1080p 30, this works out really well. I mean, even the Raspberry Pi 4 did a pretty decent job at 720p 30, 1080p 30. We're still getting those drop frames at 1080 60, and hopefully this is fixed. Something we were wishing for on the Raspberry Pi 4 for a very long time, but uh, at 60, it's going to drop a ton of frames. And as you can see, even at 30, we've still got some drop frames here. Now, it's totally watchable like this. It'd just be nice to go up to 1080. So obviously, with a Linux distro like this, we can open up Terminal and install applications from here sudo app install and uh, you know as long as it's compatible with arm we'll be able to install it but ubuntu also comes with the gnome software center which makes it really easy for new users to get new applications got a few different sections down here create work play develop heading into create you can see gives us a list of everything we can install right now and i have run into a few of these apps that just won't install because we are on an arm chip but they're kind of few and far in between it does a really good job of weeding everything out also got our play section for games. Find some games to mess around with. But there's another application software center that you can install, and it's one that I actually really like to use with the Pi, and that's Discover. This is basically the same thing you're going to find on the Steam Deck. And uh, from the main menu, we've got all of our applications, accessibility, accessories, developer tools, games. We head to emulators, got access to the Dolphin emulator. Don't have to hit up terminal or anything. We've even got access to the Yuzu emulator. Scrolling down a bit, RetroArch, uh, there's some MAME here. Not too bad. And uh, we've also got a bunch of games that we can mess around with if you want to. This is one that I personally like to use because it does offer some different applications than the GNOME Software Center that comes pre-installed with Ubuntu. One thing you might want for a full desktop experience would be some type of document editing software, and LibreOffice has you covered. You can download the full suite for free. Uh, you can do it directly from the GNOME Software Center here, or you can do it from Terminal. We've got the uh, LibreMath, LibreWrite, LibreCalc. Got a drawing suite here. Let's go into the writer. And this will allow us to easily create new documents or edit existing documents. Uh, everything you need is here. I mean, as you can see, it is a full suite. So it's definitely got you covered with any kind of editing or creation you need. And another thing that I always like to install is a nice photo editor. We've got GIMP, open source, ready to go, sort of like Photoshop, but uh, yeah, it's free to use. So from here, I'll just go ahead and open up this image. This is something I just downloaded. And let's say we just wanted to uh, do a little bit of editing here. Really easy to use. If you've used any kind of editing software before, you should be right at home. And uh, we can do this real quick. Let me go ahead and just get this all cut out. Just copy that. Go ahead and paste it. Now what I want to do here is let's just go ahead and fill this in. So we can fill it in with a pattern. We can go with basically any color we want. Let's go ahead and choose red here. There's several ways to do this. I just use the edit kind of fill with color. File, we'll go ahead and export this. And I'll just export it directly to my desktop. And we can close this down. And you can definitely edit photos. Just a quick cutout here, definitely not perfect, but if you took your time, you can make it look really pro here with GIMP. And the final thing I wanted to talk about here was something experimental that I've been messing around with, and that's going to be Steam on the Raspberry Pi. I've got a few games installed. I've got a couple of these working, but uh, let's go with... We'll just open up Steam real quick. I'll show you this. I've got it in the smaller mode. Got a couple downloaded. Half-Life 2. <laughs> and 
And obviously, this version on Steam of Half-Life 2 was never meant to run on an ARM chip. But luckily, Box86, which is some really awesome software, uh, will allow you to kind of run some PC games on your Raspberry Pi 5. And this hasn't totally been optimized for the Pi 5. I'm sure in the future we'll get some better updates here. This is not running like I was really hoping it would. But again, still really early. And I think we've actually got uh, Half-Life 2 running on the Raspberry Pi 4 a bit better than this right here. But it's still pretty cool to see that, you know, I mean, in these early stages, we've got PC games running on the Raspberry Pi 5. This will get better down the road. Now, don't expect to run Cyberpunk 2077 natively on this ARM chip. But I think we're going to see some really awesome old games running at full speed on this single board computer. So in the end, yeah, I do think that this could be used as an everyday desktop PC for a lot of people out there with some tweaking and tuning. Now, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you're looking for a AAA gaming machine, or if you need a workstation that requires a lot of CPU and GPU power to get your work done, this won't be for you, but for everyday computing tasks, you could definitely get by with a Raspberry Pi 5. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I'll have a few more coming up very soon. I've got some emulation that I want to test out here in Ubuntu. So if there's any specific games you want to see running for PS2, uh, even Switch, let me know down in the comments. And if you're interested in picking a Raspberry Pi 5 up, I'll leave some links down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.